A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The land of the Lord, the hand of the Lord came upon me and led me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many they were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were. He asked me, son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, see, I will bring spirit upon you so that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you and make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin and put spirit in you so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been told and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together bone, joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the spirit, prophesy son of man, and say to the spirit, thus says the Lord God, from the four winds come, O spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore, therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, those whom he has redeemed from the hand of the foe and gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. They went astray in the desert wilderness, the way to an inhabited city they did not find. Hungry and thirsty, their life was wasting away within them. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, he rescued them, and he led them by a direct way to reach an inhabited city. Let him give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wondrous deeds to the children of men, because he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with good things.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God. Guide me in your truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. The leg bones connected to the thigh bone. Thigh bone connected to the hip bone. It's a wonderful thing when we use music to take scripture and teach. Many of us remember learning that, that song about the very reading we heard today about how God will blow life into dry bones and lift us out of our graves. All my people I will lift you out of your graves and put flesh on you and breathe life into you. It's hard not to think about this reading at any time you would visit a cemetery where people are put for safekeeping for the day when God will have them come back to life and we will be body and soul in heaven, not just souls in heaven. And yet that is what Jesus promises and that's what the long-standing tradition of the prophets hold. I want to talk a little bit about Pius X. Giuseppe Sarto was born in France in a tiny little village outside Venice. 1835 is when he was born. He eventually became Pope in 1903, it was a very controversial conclave. He became Pope in a, a time when there was a lot of unrest, and the truth is he didn't get the most votes, at least not the most votes of the cardinals. It was more or less a tie until one of the cardinals exercised a veto in the name of the emperor of France. Huge controversy erupted because although this veto had been there for a long time that an emperor could do, it had not been done for a long time and then once it had been, and it was the last time, it resulted in Giuseppe becoming Pius X. As you can imagine, there was a lot of controversy in this. I can't help but think about all this in the time that we're at right before an election with 
every side saying to the other side that things aren't quite right. But the thing that gives me hope is Pius X. And in fact, Jesus today teaching us about great love. The greatest commandment. Pius X ended up earning his place here in the calendar of saints because of his great love. Love of the church and love of bringing people, keeping people on the pathway to Christ. He was a little bit of a reformer and at the same time he kept us on the path that led to Christ with great love. And as Jesus teaches today, great love is the spirit that blows life into all things. Love of God and love of neighbor. Powerful saint to pray to. Sometimes we think we're in the only age of unrest. It was tough for him. And yet, with God's help and with the Holy Spirit, with that breath of life that can blow into any dry bone, put flesh on it, he was able to not just fulfill his role, but to fulfill it in the very flesh of, of Jesus. The Pope, Christ's presence on earth. Oh, that we could all do that. And even in the midst of walking through a time that feels like dry bones. And pray that the Holy Spirit, that God himself, that Jesus, all of which we mark ourselves with each day as children of heaven, might come upon us and help us to live a new life, lifted out of the grave, lifted out of the waters of baptism, which make us a life in Christ and make us a life that reflects great love. You see, it's the miracle of redemption. And we are not only all need it, we all depend on it. And if we start there and if we delve into what that means, there's endless possibilities of the Lord giving us each day new life and conquering any dry bone in our life and anything that is far from Christ. What is the greatest commandment Jesus was asked today? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, never let us to forget that it is precisely there that you call us to new life. New life each day.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said you are a cross of peace, I give you my peace, I give you. What not are you going to say to And I will thank you for the church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. the body of Christ.